Greetings and welcome to the latest edition of Caring About Seniors. Now, as you know, I sit down with Dave Stieglitz, who is the president of Oasis Senior Advisors Jacksonville, and we discuss all things about senior living. Today, we're delighted to welcome into the studio Alexander Moore from Umicare, and we're going to find out all about it. Welcome, Alexander, and good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. So the first thing we have to say is, what is Umicare? Well, Umicare is a friendly marketplace that connects seniors with trained local caregivers. As simple as that. It's as simple as that. It can be very hard to find the right caregiver when you decide you need in-home care. And that's our specialty is matching people with the perfect caregiver. And how did you come up with Umicare? Well, it calls to a relationship. Um, it's about you and me. That's what the relationship between a caregiver and someone they're taking care of. And so uh, it was kind of a clever play on that. And what makes you different from some of the other places out there? Uh, the biggest difference is we are a platform. So we, we put the power in the hands of the people, so to speak, right? So uh, if you need in-home care, this is a big decision. And you should, have, um, you, should, you should be able to make a decision about who you're bringing into your home. And we felt that that was very important. So we wanted to provide a platform where you can um, get matched with the perfect caregiver for you. And that becomes your caregiver. Do you give advice to people on which way to go if they're completely confused? Yeah, absolutely. There's a, <laughs> it's common. It's yes. common. Uh, it, it, you know, people find themselves in this situation and they don't know what the options are. So we take a very consultative approach on the front end to help people figure out what's right for them. And what does that first consultation look like? Um, it can happen over the phone or it can happen in person. And um, it takes between 15 and 20 minutes. We, we, talk, we start with a consultation that says, well, tell me why you called today. Mm. And yeah. we listen. Yeah. And that's mostly what we do in our consultations is listen and take in information because then it helps us um, figure out the type of care that the person needs mm. and the type of support that they need. And then we can go out and figure out how to help them. Let's talk about the, the caregivers. How do you find them? How do you screen them? How do you support the caregivers? Absolutely. So when I first got into this industry, what I found out very quickly is there is a extreme labor shortage. 85% of home care agencies are turning away clients because they don't have the caregivers to support them. Correct. And as I looked into that issue, um, it's, it's a complicated one, but it, at the bottom of it, it's an economic one. Um, to be a caregiver in the U.S. is not um, an incredibly lucrative job right now. It's something that I want to change because I think it's a career for the future. So what we did was we, we said, well, how can we use technology to lower the overhead cost of running a traditional agency? and then deliver that value back to the caregivers in the form of higher pay, which would allow us to recruit higher level caregivers and um, actually recruit people from different industries into becoming caregivers, which has been very interesting. So while everybody else has somewhat of a labor shortage, we're doing pretty well. Uh, the word has gotten out, a lot of caregivers are finding us and joining our platform. How long have you been running? Uh, we started a pilot in November to really test the whether we can recruit caregivers and get good quality caregivers onto our platform. And um, I'm proud to say we had a very, very successful pilot. Um, we've gotten the word out that Yumi Care is out there and that there's an alternative um, where you can be an independent caregiver in the community, earn more money than you have before, and meet great clients that are right for you. When, when you um, do that initial consultation, do you find that some of the um, clients actually think that they need something and you're listening to them thinking, actually, you need something else? <laughs> and how do, you, how do you actually explain that to them? I've found that, that clients in, in this situation, they really want more advice. They're not sure what to do. Mm. Um, a lot of times it's a son or daughter who calls. And, you know, maybe that conversation started with, you know, they got a call as, you know, hey, mom fell or something like that, right? <laughs> and so, so then um, they call us, they're looking for support, but they don't know exactly where they want to start. Um, a lot of the conversation can, um, you know, be around, well, how much time of support do you think that you need within a week is a conversation that we have with them. 
um, what types of activities do, do they need support with, um, and really what does, what does the, the senior want, the person who's being taken care of, what are their wishes, uh, what did they used to do, uh, what's their level of independence, right? Because we need to know all that information so we can tell what kind of level to bring, of care to bring into the home. How, how do you see this uh, uh, yeah. being useful for you? Well, I get, again, I get calls of people that, that need advice and need direction as well, and not yeah. all of them need assisted living. Yeah. A lot of them can still do well at home with just a little bit of assistance, a little bit maybe of transportation or just help mm -hmm. with things because they can't do the meals or things anymore. So absolutely, and to be able to have options, um, I mean, I get a lot of calls that say, why don't I just get a live-in caregiver? They have really no idea how this works. Right. And they think that oh, I'll just find somebody that'll live in my house for free and, and, and they'll take care of me and it'll be a Shangri-La. And that really is not right. realistic. But you know, to have different options, different platforms, different way to, to do this and then to connect people, um, that way it could be an awesome option. For yeah, absolutely. And, and we find that, that preserving people's choice is important. It doesn't sound very important, but... Imagine no, your son. it sounds very important. Well, right? well, it, it, it's it, choose it, the ability to choose who your caregiver is is important, and it's not something that's out there right, right now. Right. And that's so, kind of what I'm fascinated with. How how do you make that match? How do they, you know, because yes. you're actually doing some pre-screening, so you're not yeah. presenting every caregiver that you have, but you kind of narrow it down to those that that are going to be able to match those specific needs yeah. that you've picked up on. And then that somehow gets on your platform, and then they still have then they have choices that Absolutely. are presented. Yes, so it's it's actually pretty neat. And this gets into the secret sauce a little bit. Okay. So um, there are really four things that you need to consider when you're bringing a caregiver into your home. Um, one is is distance. If a caregiver has to drive a long way, even if it's for a four or five hour shift, the likelihood that that relationship is going to continue for a long term is it gets lower. Sure. So you want to have a tight territory management. You want to have caregivers in the areas where you're serving. Um, so location, availability is important too. Caregivers have lives, they have children. Um, some of them want to work weekends, some of them want to work overnights. Um, and so their availability is an important factor that we take into consideration. And then training. So what level of care does this person need in the home? And um, so they may need a home health aide or a CNA level, or they might just need a companion. And then the, the fourth thing, which is something that we've innovated on, is personality and things mm -hmm. in common. Because again, the end goal isn't to just have somebody come in and do stuff for you. It's to create a relationship. All right. It's, it's what we look for in, in the assisted living side is anybody can find a room, but let's find a place that you can engage and thrive because the culture there matches what you're looking for exactly and so you're doing the exact same thing find someone that that can be a, a friend it's know, a, that, yes. it's it's about a match and we've had we've actually had clients who have said my caregiver is my friend mm -hmm. uh, we have a we have a great we have a great video um, out there where um, that's that's basically what they said they said my caregiver is my friend and they've become fast friends and mm -hmm. that if, that's if the ultimate that goal. is the ultimate yeah. goal that is mm -hmm. the ultimate goal um, if you if you look at the industry right now the standard is we'll get someone there, but it might not be the same person. You can imagine how disruptive that would be, yes. especially with memory care issues. Um, and, and you might not really like that person or get along with that person, but they'll be there, right? So that's, we can go, we want to go beyond, we want to go beyond that mm -hmm. and, and create that relationship. And so far we've been doing a very good job of that. So d w your, um, your caregivers, do they are they assigned to one client only? Uh, they can work multiple. Um, another differentiator of ours is um, it, when you when you find yourself in the situation of needing a caregiver and you call for in home care, you'll find that um, the agencies will say, "Well, our rate is you know twenty seven twenty eight dollars an hour," but what they don't tell you is they have service minimums. Hmm. So we can't send any they'll say we can't send anybody out there unless you do four hours at least three or four days a week right and that might work for some people but some people might not need that much care and so we don't have a service minimums rule it's really between you and your caregiver if your caregiver is available and is willing to come over and help for a couple hours at a time um, they can do that and and that works very well when the caregiver is close by to the to the client. 
So again, back to that back territory to management and location, that's something we take very um, much into consideration and we map all of our caregivers and we can, you know, um, it helps us filter down to that, that group of caregivers that we might offer and say, mm -hmm. hey, would you like to interview with these caregivers? Do you set the rates? Do they negotiate that between the customer and the... They, they certainly can negotiate the rates, but we set the rates, we start the rates, we have packages um, and we set it to, to market because um, one thing that we don't like is, um, for instance, the care.com model. So imagine the care.com model where literally anyone can list themselves as a caregiver on their platform. Um, and is that, is that true? They can, yeah, you can create a listing for yourself as a caregiver on the that. platform. Yeah. And they have rating systems, um, you know, so you can see how, how they do, which is, yeah. which is okay. that's fine. Um, but you also have to set your rates. So imagine you're a caregiver now you've got this platform where it's a race to the bottom. Well, if I want to get more customers, I got to lower my rates. And so you've got these caregivers that are, you know, it's kind of a race to the bottom in, in terms of value. But um, creating a relationship and helping support somebody in the home is very valuable. And part of our mission is to really change the game for what it means to be a caregiver in the U.S. Mm -hmm. If you look at the stats, I mean, we've got 10,000 people turning 65 every day for the next 30 years. Caregiving will be a career in the future, and it's not going to be on par with you know working fast food anymore um, <laughs> because companies like ours are going to change what it means to be a professional caregiver in the yeah, US. Absolutely. If anyone's watching out there that wants either your services or wants to be a caregiver, how do they find you? Well, they can find us on social media, they can find us on the web, www.yumicare.com. That's Y U M I C A R E. And uh, they can submit a form, they can call us. Um, either way, we'll be in touch. And um, it's very easy to get started. And we can actually fulfill services, in most cases, same day or next day. Alex, thank you for coming in and talking to us about Yumicare. Absolutely. It sounds fascinating. And good luck with the future. Thank you very much. And don't forget, if you'd like to know any more information about Yumicare, you can also go to iwantabuzz.com. Absolutely. And this is, this is an area that many of our veterans don't know about, um, but is so critical, especially with so many here in town. So for our veterans, uh, the VA will actually help pay for assisted living. The basic requirements are you had to have at least 90 consecutive days of active duty during a declared war period. You didn't have to serve in theater. You could have been in Europe during Vietnam but you had to have 90 consecutive days of active duty and one of those had to correspond with a declared war period. That's your service requirement. Then you have to have a medical need for assisted living. And that's as simple as the doctor says you're a fall risk and he wants you to use a cane or a walker. That alone can get you uh, the medical need. And then the cost of the assisted living has to exceed your gross monthly income. That's not hard to do. Um, and then you can't have more than 127000 in liquid assets outside of a trust. A house doesn't count, um, and things that are protected in a trust don't count. So if you meet all those requirements, for a single veteran, the VA will chip in $1,900 a month toward the cost of assisted living. It's a significant benefit. For a married veteran, it's almost $2,300 a month. And the, the, uh, the portion that really doesn't know about this benefit, the surviving spouses of our deceased veterans, the VA will chip in almost $1,250 a month for that. Um, it's a difference maker and really can, can get some people that were in a very difficult situation into a safe one. Greetings and welcome to the latest edition of Caring About Seniors. I am your host, Adrienne Houghton. Now, as you know, I sit down with Oasis Senior Advisors Jacksonville and we discuss all things to do with senior living. Today, joining me in the studio from Oasis is Al Bogosius and our guest is Betty Bennett from Rough Rubs. 
What does that have to do with seniors, we ask ourselves? Well, we're just about to find out. Welcome, Bessie. Thank you. And good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. So tell me what Rough Rubs is. Well, Rough Rubs is a canine massage therapy business. And of course, with canine massage, we work mostly with older dogs, the ones that are um, maybe close to the end of their lives or have uh, um, arthritis or different types of um, diseases. And we also work with, with younger animals as well because it, the benefits that the dogs get are basically the same as the benefits as we get if we have a massage. Yeah. So um, it relaxes them, it increases their blood flow, and it also helps their owners because as we know, owners of animals almost take better care of their animals than they do of themselves. That's so true. when the animal is healthy, they feel more healthy. Yeah. So Tell me, I mean, you, have you always done this? Have you always worked with dogs? No, actually I haven't. When I was a kid, I did want to be a veterinarian, but I sat in on a surgery when I was about 19 and decided, no, this is not for me. <laughs> so I went into the education field and I taught for 35 years before I um, retired from the University of North Florida in 2016. And once I retired, I decided that I still wanted to work, that um, I, I don't like just sitting at home. So. So, but that was my career before I got into Rough Rubs. And did you, did you come up with this idea of massaging dogs or is it something that's been around for years that is not widely spoken about? It's actually been around for quite some time. Um, but I, I went out searching because I wanted to work with animals now that I had an opportunity to reinvent myself sure. at age 57. Um, so I started looking into some different areas that I could go into where I could work with the, my furry friends. And uh, I found a school in Sarasota that taught massage um, therapy for animals. And so a friend of mine and I started taking classes down there and did our 400 hours of certification and started the business and that's, that's where it went. How fantastic. Now, I mean, I, I'm sure, although the dogs um, find it beneficial, do you, do you teach something to do for the, um, the owners of the dogs to help them? Do you show them how to, to work with them? Because it must be therapeutic for the owners as well as the dogs. It is. As it well is. As the dogs. And, they're, and, and I've been very interested. Their um, owners of animals are just so interested in their quality of life. Yeah. And so when I come out um, to do the initial consultation and I do the study of the animal and watch their gait analysis and those kind of things, I can offer information to the owner as to particular types of therapies that they can use, whether it be um, heat or cold or showing them different types of techniques that they can use for the animals. Yeah. And that, that puts a little bit more back into their hands so that they feel like they actually have a part of improving the quality of life for their animals. How did you get involved with Rough Labs? <laughs> Was it massage? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Betty and I met at a networking event, I believe in Clay County, mm -hmm. several mm -hmm. years ago. And I'm just enamored with that idea because, number one, people take better care of their dogs. Yeah. Seniors, that's their only lifeline for many of them is their dog. And if you can make the dog happier, it's the best medicine for the senior. So mm -hmm. I, I find what she does, and the reason why I wanted her here today is you can retire, but you don't have to expire. Okay. Okay. Oh, I like Very that well phrase. Said, you know? <laughs> Reinvent yourself. Yeah. Okay. I should be retired, but I love what I do. Mm -hmm. So why not keep doing it? Yeah. So, right. Wonderful. Right. Thank you. Yeah, no, no, I totally agree. Do you, do you find that um, with your business that it's difficult to, to market, to, to get your name out there, to let people know what services you have available? Um, well, I think with that, the difficulty in it is explaining to people and helping them to understand that this is a legitimate business. I know when I first mentioned to my husband that this is what I wanted to do, he laughed at me <laughs> because he said uh, massage for dogs, and that's kind of the general impression that, that other people have of it. But just getting that word out there and having opportunities like this, which I appreciate, 
to let people know that it is something that's very vital to an animal's life. Mm -hmm. And even if I've got some clients I see once a week, I've got some that I see once a month, um, some for specific disabilities or diseases, and um, it's beneficial for all of them. Sure. So what other services do Rough Rubs offer? We also do pet sitting, and um, we can include the massage in with the pet sitting. And I also teach canine um, or pet CPR and first aid. Uh, for a company called Pet Emergency Education. I just finished teaching 65 people out at Canines for Warriors last week. So, and I love working with those people out there. They're just a shout out to those people. They're so yes. passionate about what they do for dogs yes. and for veterans. Now, in front of you, you have a, you have a book. Yes. Tell me about this because you wrote this book. Yes, I did, I did. When I was at UNF, um, my, I was kind of considered the expert on bullying there, and that was a passion that I had. My dissertation dealt with discipline and bullying and those kind of things, and I had, we had some sad issues in my family that dealt with that as well. And so um, I, just, I wrote this about the time I was retiring, and my goal was to be able to get to continue my work with the schools and with the children to um, get them to, to speak up if they're being bullied to not hold it all inside because that's where we come up with the dangerous situations that we have with students harming themselves or even committing suicide. Right. So I used this book to go out into elementary and middle schools and read it to the students as a way to start discussions because it's about a little girl that um, gets bullied at school and she comes home and she talks to her dog Millie and um, it's encouraging them no matter who they talk to just to talk to somebody and even just talking about it helps to internalize what's going on and other people could hear them talking as well while they're talking to while she was talking to Millie. Are you still going to the schools? I have not. COVID kind of mm -hmm. um, um, got in the way but um, I would like to start getting back out in the schools. so I invite any teachers that would like me to come out just to get in touch with me and let me know and I'd love to come out and Absolutely. Talk to your students. Absolutely. So we touched on it briefly, COVID. How did that affect your business? Um, I was able to stay in business, but I did lose some, some clients because they didn't, you know, the idea that I don't have a, a brick and mortar shop, I actually go out to their homes where the dogs are more comfortable. So having someone coming into their home during COVID and bringing germs in and those kind of things. But since then, I have been able to build it back up. Of course, I lose a few. Um, considering most of my animals are seniors to begin with, I lose a few through death, but I have been able to acquire more. Yeah. And how have you found that this, this business enriches your life? Oh my goodness. I just, I absolutely love what I do. I've, um, as in, as what Al said, reinventing myself. I wish I had found something like this earlier. Not that I begrudge being an educator because I love that too, but um, just the joy that it brings to me to know that the animals that I'm helping are also helping their humans and pet people are the best people in the whole world. Yeah. Um, they're just so kind and so nice and, and you know, Al seems to be like a pet person mm. <laughs> because he exhibits all of those characteristics. And I'm sure the people that you come across, you, 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 you're able to um, refer them to, to Betty. Yes. and. <sighs> She hit, on, she hit upon a point that I'm, I'm a pet person and I'm also a social media person and put a plug in for my dog, Teddy. He has his own Facebook page and he uh -huh. has 206 active members. Well, I'm sure that's more than a lot of people. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I've seen Teddy's fan page. Just go to Teddy's fan page and you could sign up. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That really is. So t tell me, what's a typical day? I mean, there's probably not a typical day because each day changes, mm -hmm. but what's a typical day for Bessie? Well, if I'm massaging, um, generally uh, on one of my most typical days would be a Friday where I've got a couple of clients at, at three o'clock, a chihuahua and a, um, well, both of them are chihuahuas, one is bigger than the other one. And then after that, that's out um, over in downtown. And then I drive to Doctor's Inlet and I have Raven, one of my favorites, Rottweiler. Um, just a sweetie and a half and then I uh, were to Middleburg and then I've got Daisy who's a little beagle and Golly uh, gee, so that's all over the place mm -hmm. literally mm -hmm. and the area that you cover is is Greater Jacksonville, St. Augustine, mm -hmm. Clay County 
Fantastic. So I, I, I don't mind the drive because I get to work with the people. And like I said, I just absolutely love what I do. Yeah, I think I think it's, I it's mm. yeah, I think it's super wonderful. So what advice would you give to someone who is thinking about retiring and is slightly nervous mm -hmm. about perhaps giving up their regular mm -hmm normal routine i would say don't worry about it that um, once you get into retirement you can decide on whether you enjoy being just retired or whether you want to do something else and and it, it's a way where you can reinvent yourself and and fulfill goals that you never thought you'd be able to do yeah and it's just so rich uh, enriching and you never want to lose the passion that you have for life and when you feel like you're being able to do something that benefits others, whether it's dogs or people, um, do it. And how do people find you? Because I know there's going to be people who are watching this and I they're saying, so. oh, I hope so. I'd like a book, I'd like, to, I'd like to have my dog have a rough rub. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how do they find you, Betty? Well, we actually have a website. It's www.roughrubs.com. Very simple. Um, I'm on Facebook. Uh, we have a Facebook page and um, I'm on Yelp and they can just Google Rough Rubs and find us. And that's R-U-F-F. R-U-F-F. R-U-B-S. Well, thank you for coming in. Thank you so much for having it's me. It's wonderful to find out and I'm, I'm sure you're making a lot of dogs very happy. Thank you. They make me very happy too. Good. <laughs> Thanks, Al. Thanks, <laughs> Betty. Yeah. And don't forget, if you'd like to know any more information, you can find it on www.roughrubs.com or I want a buzz.com. Bye for now. Absolutely. And this is this is an area that many of our veterans don't know about, um, but is so critical, especially with so many here in town. So for our veterans, uh, the VA will actually help pay for assisted living. The basic requirements are you had to have at least 90 consecutive days of active duty during a declared war period. You didn't have to serve in theater. You could have been in Europe during Vietnam, but you had to have 90 consecutive days of active duty, and one of those had to correspond with a declared war period. That's your service requirement. Then you have to have a medical need for assisted living, and that's as simple as the doctor says you're a fall risk, and he wants you to use a cane or a walker. That alone can get you uh, the medical need. And then the cost of the assisted living has to exceed your gross monthly income. That's not hard to do. Um, and then you can't have more than 127,000 in liquid assets outside of a trust. The house doesn't count um, and things that are protected in a trust don't count. So if you meet all those requirements, for a single veteran, the VA will chip in $1,900 a month toward the cost of assisted living. It's a significant benefit. For a married veteran, it's almost $2,300 a month. and the, uh, the portion that really doesn't know about this benefit, the surviving spouses of our deceased veterans, the VA will chip in almost $1,250 a month for that. Um, it's a difference maker and really can, can get some people that were in a very difficult situation into a safe one.